Thank you, Mark, and a very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It was Irish playwright Sean O'Casey who was drawing on Shakespeare for his inspiration, who wrote, all the world's a stage and most of us are desperately unrehearsed. In the spirit of a final dress rehearsal, it has been a great pleasure to see so many of you engaging enthusiastically with the stars, the themes, and the experts as our conference has unfolded today. If we didn't know before, all of us here most are most definitely now aware that we have a leading role in the tourism production. We all firmly belong to the cast of thousands required to make Northern Ireland the movie roll on to become an international blockbuster. And of course, for each of us, it all starts somewhere. Picture, if you will, the time, 1980 or thereabouts, the location, Coleraine Inst, the annual stage production, the drama, Lionel Bart's musical, Oliver. Can you guess which of our participants here today played the title role? And further, who do you think might have been the artful dodger? Who other than their parents would have imagined Mark and James's subsequent success? So no matter how small your operation, your business or your organisation, the key message is to take home today is that everyone has a lead part to play in growing tourism. The script and the plot for developing tourism in Northern Ireland are there. The ending, we know. There are no spoiler alerts required. We all remain fully focused on the overarching prize, which is a thriving and profitable industry worth a billion pounds a year to our economy by 2020. The latest plot twist, of course, is the new name for, for tourism's lead body. I'm still getting used to saying Tourism Northern Ireland. I would describe it, perhaps, as a confirmation name, bringing a unified brand, renewed impetus, and a fresh springboard to move the industry forward. We have great cause to be positive about the future. In terms of the year ahead, attractions coming on stream include the £7.5 million project to restore Mount Stewart to its original 1920s glory. Recent news of the National Trust's purchase of the 900 acres of historic estate land around the house, increasing the size of the attraction tenfold, is another superb development. The Gobbins, a major coastal attraction near Whitehead in County Antrim, will also open this summer. Some say the original designer, Barclay Dean Wise, was architecturally exuberant. Others claim that he had lost his marbles. Either way, this extensively restored dramatic cliff face path will offer another jewel on the famous Causeway coastal route. In Derry, Londonderry, the renovation and extension to the Apprentice Boys Memorial Hall will contain a new siege museum, a great addition to the cultural attractions of the city. Back in Belfast, to coin a phrase, new attractions will include the opening of the Titanic walkways and the Belfast windows on wildlife, added city experiences that will improve the visitor flow around Titanic Quarter. And there's more. In 2016, we'll see a massive expansion to the Museum of Free Derry, Heritage Gateway to Fermanagh, and the completion of the HMS Caroline project to transform the First World War's last surviving battleship into a floating museum. The Waterfront Hall, with its new exhibition facilities, is also set to open in 2016, a long-awaited development to add value to the business tourism mix. This is a game-changing development that will transform Belfast's capacity and burgeoning reputation for staging and hosting major conferences and conventions. In terms of events, we're already on the countdown to the Irish Open at Royal County Down, an ideal platform for Northern Ireland to showcase its golf product, its golf stars and its golf destination potential. 
Next, in June, we'll have the Grand Fondo Giro d'Italia Legacy Event, which begins a three-year run in 2015 and will highlight our premium cycling facilities and showcasing, as last year, our unspoilt natural landscape to thousands of amateur riders. Then after that, the summer also sees the return of the fabulous spectacle of the magnificent tall ships, up to 80 in all, attracting hundreds of thousands to the Titanic Maritime Festival, the city and the shores of Belfast Lock. So as you can see, our set and our location are buzzing with activity. As a new era for the industry begins to open up, I believe the critics who come to see Northern Ireland, the movie, will be wholly positive. On a personal note, I'll be handing over the reins of the chairmanship very shortly. I shall, of course, remain deeply committed to playing my own part in Northern Ireland tourism to the full. Perhaps best supporting actor? Maybe in my dreams. As chairman, that has so often been my role. It's been my pleasure on so many occasions to be the warm-up act for my minister. I wonder how many of you can recall the TV series Blackadder with Rowan Atkinson and Tony Robinson. The scriptwriters claimed they had to end the series when they could think of no more ways for the title character Blackadder to describe Baldrick. So with that in mind, <laughs> it is my delight to introduce Minister Arlene Foster one final time. To my successor, a word of advice. The rules are simple. Say something nice and mention Fermanagh. <laughs> However, I first have to scotch the rumour that her new enlarged department after 2016 would be called the Department for Tourism and the Economy. The acronym DOT would imply too cosy a relationship with Tourism NI, it was feared. Minister, I'd like to think that we, whilst we have made great strides in recent years, that this would have been scarcely possible without your steadfast commitment to our cause. In the words of Fermanagh-educated writer Samuel Beckett, <laughs> I have my faults, but changing my tune is not one of them. Perhaps more elegant in juxtaposing your role and mine are the words of Fermanagh's other favourite son, Oscar Wilde. Some cause happiness wherever they go, others whenever they go. So that is my cue, time to go. So would you please welcome Minister Arlene Foster. Well done, Hart. <laughs> Yet again, I have to say that. And again, thank you for your very kind introduction. I certainly miss those introductions because I always waited to see how he was going to weave from Anna uh, into the introduction. But anyway, there we are. Well, you've had quite a day of it. Um, it's very difficult to follow Jimmy Nesbitt and indeed Dr. Hastings, uh, but I'm going to try uh, by giving you uh, an announcement here this afternoon. And this is a conference <coughs> that I try always to attend. I don't want to miss it, and I'm very pleased to be here, um, even if it has been just for a short time. I've just had to come out of the executive, which is meeting up in uh, Parliament buildings, or rather Stormont Castle. And uh, as Hart has said, I do very firmly believe that we are moving very strongly into a new era for tourism in Northern Ireland. And in recent years, uh, Tourism Northern Ireland, formerly known as, it's a bit like Prince, formerly known as uh, Northern Ireland Tourist Board, um, the tourism economy has grown significantly and we've seen some very, very impressive uh, moves forward. From the hosting of the MTV European Music Awards way back in 2011 and uh, the launch of the Giro d'Italia last year, and with £300 million pounds or thereabouts worth of public money invested in between, uh, the last few years have boosted tourism figures and raised Northern Ireland's profile as a must-see destination in global tourism markets. People and places, so important, uh, and indeed uh, allowing people to have experiences here that they will never forget. And of course I can't think of Londonderry and the Wall City without mentioning Martin McCrossan. 
who, if he had been here today, uh, would have been larger than life uh, as ever. And I just wanted to mention his name uh, because he was such a huge figure in that city and indeed uh, in tourism in general uh, in Northern Ireland. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room uh, that will miss him, and I certainly miss him. So now it's time to take uh, the next step, and in January uh, I announced the outcome of the Hunter Review, and I outlined a series of changes, including uh, a new name for tourism's uh, lead body, uh, new leadership, new partnerships, and a new strategy. And I'm pleased that the Hunter Review was welcomed by stakeholders, and that there is widespread support for the implementation uh, of its recommendations, which focus on setting the strategic direction for tourism, building relationships uh, within the sector, and closer alignment with Invest Northern Ireland. And the reason for these changes is quite straightforward. Uh, I want to make tourism, in its widest sense, even stronger. And my goal is uh, to consolidate the unprecedented success that has been achieved to prepare us to take the industry uh, even uh, forward even faster and in a greater way, and to strengthen the drive uh, to grow the industry. And our challenge, of course, is to maintain uh, the momentum that has been generated and to continue to increase uh, the economic benefits derived from tourism, uh, and I have no doubt everyone here in this room is up for that and that they share my ambitions uh, for the industry. The reshaping of our tourism structures will help us to build uh, new relationships with our 11 new councils, and that's particularly important given their increased powers and their new responsibility for community planning and local economic development. In terms of setting the future direction for tourism, uh, work is already underway to bring forward a new strategic plan which will coordinate the work of key tourism partners, and, uh, including central and local government, and that will be crucial to achieving my and the industry's long-term goal to make tourism uh, in Northern Ireland a £1 billion industry by 2020. And that's a, a challenging, uh, but to me, reachable goal, and achieving it will mean focusing on what we are best at and, and marketing those things uh, more effectively uh, to an eager worldwide audience. Through that approach, uh, we already market Northern Ireland uh, as a place of outstanding natural beauty, uh, a destination with world-class attractions, a great place for golf, and a proven venue for Blue Ribbon events. But there's another outstanding local resource that we can make more of, our world-class food. We have award-winning large-scale producers exporting all over the world, uh, basing uh, their success on our deserved reputation for quality, safety and purity. Added to that, uh, we have local artisan producers of everything from gin to salt aged beef, selling to local markets and to international delicatessens. And the third leg of the stool is the growing reputation of our restaurants and our gastropubs. For far too long, uh, Northern Ireland was undiscovered territory for many leading food writers and critics. But today, just take a look at our food magazines and our Sunday supplements, and you will see a very different story. The quality, variety, and distinctiveness of our top restaurants is at last being recognised, and Northern Ireland is on the map as somewhere worth visiting for the food alone. Food tells the story of our culture, of our people, and of its landscape, which is positive, unique, and authentic. It is our story captured on a plate, as it were. Our food is the greatest untapped uh, marketing resource for our tourist industry and the wider economy. And that is why I have decided that 2016 will be our year of food, a year-long celebration of all that is good. Government, in partnership with the tourism and agri-food industries, will invest in a programme of events uh, and promotions and marketing initiatives. The aim will be to raise Northern Ireland's reputation for good food, to improve the experience of Northern Ireland food available to visitors, to promote pride and confidence in Northern Ireland food, and to provide role models and peer mentoring. We want to create a favourable image of Northern Ireland food in external markets and improve the reputation of the food sector as a career choice. I have decided that the year of food should be focused on promoting food and tourism in Northern Ireland and also on reinforcing the reputation 
and growing the sales of our local produce in other markets. I have asked Tourism Northern Ireland to take the initiative forward and to work closely with Invest Northern Ireland. That synergy between tourism and food is very important and we want our visitors to be delighted by their experience of our food and to want to buy it, to buy it then when they get back home. We also want our food exports to stimulate not just the taste buds but the wanderlust of the consumers sparking a desire to visit the beautiful country that produced the beautiful food. Quite simply, my vision is that after 2016, Northern Ireland will be synonymous with good food. And with your help, uh, we can make this happen. And uh, we did make it happen back in 2012 when we had Our Time, Our Place, that year-long celebration, which was a tremendous success for everybody in the tourist industry, but also raised that civic pride. So I'm hoping that the year of food will have a similar impact. And of course, one of the champions of the food initiative has been a certain Dr. Hard Hastings. And I do, of course, uh, before I sit down, want to take the opportunity to pay tribute to Hard's excellent stewardship uh, of the Tourist Board and indeed for his work as chairman over this past six years. But I think everybody recognised that Hard always went the extra mile for tourism uh, Northern Ireland and for the brand. Thank you, Hard, for your enthusiasm, your expertise uh, in tourism and hospitality, uh, and everything else that you brought, uh, your interest, you always researched uh, everything that you said. I was with you in Dublin not so long ago, and you treated us to a speech on Wellington. It was tremendous. Only you, Hard, could do that. Uh, and uh, I just think that you will be very, very difficult uh, to replace. But we wish you well in your future endeavours. And I know, of course, that you're not going anywhere and you will be closely involved in the food initiative as it goes forward. So I'm sure uh, we will continue uh, to work together. Tourism touches on so many aspects of life in Northern Ireland, so it is critical that we all continue to work together as one team. That was another one of Hard's initiatives, the One Team, One Voice initiative, and I hope that we can reach our target of a billion pounds industry by 2020. We have achieved uh, a lot in the past. We must now continue to make sure that the next movie on Northern Ireland uh, continues to be as good as the last movie on Northern Ireland. And I very much hope that everybody here will play their part and make sure that we get star ratings again. Thank you very much for listening.